Hi and welcome to this second video about API gateways. Today we are going to build on the API we created in the previous video. Previously we created an endpoint where we could perform an HTTP POST request to store information about a bird. What if someone else posted a bird to the database and you want to retrieve that information? Well, then we can create a new endpoint in our API where you can perform an HTTP GET request to retrieve that information. Before we continue, if you find my videos interesting and want to learn more about serverless and AWS, please consider subscribing to my channel. And to get notified when I publish more content, please smash that bell icon. So, what do we need to make this API endpoint? Well, we need an API gateway, of course, a Lambda function, a DynamoDB table, and an IAM role. Surprise, surprise! I'm going to reuse the awesome birds table, and I have already created a new Lambda function with the correct IAM access to our DynamoDB table. So, let's start by writing the necessary code to query our DynamoDB table for that bird information. First, we need to initiate a table object so that we can communicate with our DynamoDB table. Now we can query the database to find a bird object identified with an ID like this. Response equals table dot get item and then provide the parameter key which is a JSON object with the field name ID and then we need to provide the value of our ID. So where do we get the ID from? Well you probably guessed it, it should of course be accessible through the event object. But under what key inside the event object? I'm planning on providing the ID as a path parameter in my HTTP GET request. So then we should be able to find the ID under Event, Path Parameters and ID. You may wonder why I had to ask specifically for the ID inside the Path Parameters object. Well, in the API Gateway we can define endpoints with multiple path parameters and there we also have to give the path parameters names that get passed onwards to our lambda function inside the event object. This way we don't need to manually extract the path parameters from the URL. More on this later when we create the API endpoint. Lastly, we should create our return object and send the bird information in the response body. Now we can deploy our lambda function and go over to the API Gateway. I have here the API Gateway we created in the previous video. To create a new endpoint, we can just navigate to Routes, click Create. Now we choose a HTTP method, this should be of type GET, and the path should be slash birds and then slash curly braces ID. By writing curly braces with ID inside, we define a new path parameter called ID. And as I mentioned earlier, this get passed to our lambda function as a path parameter with the name ID, along with whatever the value a user requests in that part of the URL. Now the route is created, we need to attach an integration with our Lambda function. To do that, just click Attach Integration, and then Create and Attach an Integration, and then choose Lambda and our Lambda function. Lastly, hit Create. The new endpoint should now be accessible and connected to our Lambda function. It's now time to test our API. I'll just use Postman again, but this time you can just as well use your web browser. Just paste in the URL, 
and then add the path we created, and lastly the ID of the bird in our DynamoDB table. The moment of truth. Yes, it worked! So today we have created a new API endpoint. This is now shaping up to be an actual functioning API. In the next video, I will show you how you can ask your API for some information and then redirect the user to another resource or web page. I hope this was interesting, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment field below and I will try to answer them the best I can.